Living things are made of chemical compounds, some simple, some complex. Chemistry is not just what life is made of, it's also what life does. Everything that happens in a living organism is based on chemical reactions. So, get your paper ready, wide right, skinny left, and let's take a look at the last section in Chapter 2, Chemical Reactions and Enzymes. See you on the next slide. A chemical reaction is defined as a process that changes one set of chemicals into another set of chemicals. Existing bonds between the molecules break and new bonds form when this happens. Remember that the reactants are the substances that are going in and the products are the substances that are going out. So let's look at two very familiar chemical reactions photosynthesis and respiration. In photosynthesis, we're all real familiar with that, carbon dioxide and water are the reactants, glucose and oxygen are the products. This only goes on in the daytime since light energy is needed to start this reaction. And up at top in the green I see the reaction for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide and water going in and glucose and oxygen coming out. Can you tell that glucose is a carbohydrate with its 1 to 1 ratio? There you go. Respiration goes on day and night. Respiration uses the glucose that was produced by photosynthesis to produce energy needed to build new cells. And then it produces water and carbon dioxide as you see in the two formulas shown here. So I can see there in the yellow that is respiration. Respiration goes on day and night and respiration is the process that all living things do. Photosynthesis, just plants. Page 50 in your textbook shows another very common pair of chemical reactions that your body uses to transport carbon dioxide to the lungs. Can you identify the reactants and the products in those chemical reactions? Take a look, see if you can. Whenever chemical bonds are formed or broken, energy is either released or absorbed. There's an energy change in some way, always. Every time there's a chemical reaction, energy is involved in some way. Let's take a look. Energy absor absorbing reactions always need a source of energy to start. That energy often comes from the surrounding air in the form of heat energy. Vinegar and baking soda is an example of this. Energy releasing reactions don't always need a source of energy. Sometimes they occur spontaneously, but not always. The paper that your textbook is made of needs to get to a certain temperature to start burning, or what we call an activation energy. But for you, that's a good thing. Otherwise, your textbook would spontaneously combust. Ooh, that's a hot topic. So, activation energy is the energy that's needed to start a reaction. For example, the temperature that's needed to start burning paper. All plants and animals need energy to carry out reactions that keep them alive. Plants get their energy from the sun, while animals get their energy from plants or other animals that they consume. More on that in some of the chapters to come. But the most important thing to remember is that all reactions either release or absorb energy when those chemical bonds are broken and reformed. Next, we're going to talk about enzymes. Remember that a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of a reaction. RxN stands for reaction, guys, so don't panic. An enzyme is a biological catalyst. It speeds up the rate of chemical reactions in cells. Enzymes are proteins. Proteins are one of the four carbon compounds that we just finished talking about in the previous section. Enzymes are very, very unique, too, because they are very specific. 
enzymes catalyze only one kind of reaction and no other. So your body has all different kinds of enzymes. In fact, your digestive system has all kinds of enzymes just in and of itself. So if you take a look at this diagram, you can see that this blue enzyme, it only catalyzes the reaction that breaks apart the substrate that looks like the little fish that's coming in. Okay, so enzymes are biological catalysts and they are specific. They only, only catalyze one type of reaction, no other. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at this enzyme substrate complex. Let's understand it a little bit better. It's actually pretty easy. The reactant in an enzyme catalyzed reaction is called a substrate. Okay, so in this one we have two things. We have the enzyme and we have the substrate. Remember in the last slide when I said that enzymes are specific? This is how it works. Each protein has a very, very specific shape and the substrate it binds with has a complementary shape. The substrate stays bound to the active site until the reaction is complete. A good comparison that helps you kind of understand this is the concept of a lock and key. Okay? Only one kind of key, one specific key, fits into a lock and is made to open that lock. No other key will fit into that lock and you leave your key in the lock until the lock is open. Then you take the key out. We have a lab that we're going to be doing in class next week too called Toothpickase and that will help you understand enzyme activity a little bit better. Enzymes are essential to controlling chemical reactions in a living organism. We can't live without them. Sometimes reactions would happen so slowly or at temperatures that our body just doesn't have that we do need enzymes to get these things rolling. And because conditions in any living organism can change at any time, the effectiveness of enzymes, how well they work, is also affected by these conditions. Two major factors that affect enzyme activity are pH and temperature. So when either of those things change in your body, say when you run a fever or you suffer from exposure or you ingest too much of something, like water or alcohol or maybe um, you, you were a little kid and you ate something you shouldn't have eaten. You affect the smooth functioning of the chemical reactions in your body. And again, if you take a look at the picture that's here, again this shows the enzyme and the substrate and there's an activation site and the bonds are weakened in the substrate and the product breaks apart. Some, some enzymes also work to put things together. Okay, that happens in our body as well. I just happen to find two pictures that show things going apart. So let's recap what we talked about in this section. Chemical bonds are formed or broken and when that happens they release energy or they can absorb energy. Okay, and you're going to learn that again next year in chemistry, so it's a good thing to remember it. All living things need energy, and activation energy gets chemical reactions started. We also talked about enzymes. Enzymes are proteins, and those proteins catalyze or speed up a reaction. A good way to remember it is a lock and key. Okay, it, you put the, the, lock, the key in the lock and you open the lock and it only opens that particular lock and you leave it in until the door is unlocked or until you lock the door. Temperature and pH can also affect how well the enzymes work. This is also true of our lock and key. On very, very cold days you might find your lock frozen. So remember now, you need to draw a line at the end of your notes and write a summary and then sit down and think about some questions to write. Remember three level ones, two level twos, and one level three question. Use your textbook to help you too. Remember you should be able to answer these questions and stay away from those yes no questions. That's a 50-50 uh, chance of getting it right. 
unless you tell me to explain. Okay? So, and here's a thought to leave you with. Why did the white bear dissolve in water? It was polar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your biology teacher is so funny. See you guys later.